why we feel that you need some guidelines. Guidelines? That's right. There are some things you just cannot leave to chance. What happened? I've been a married woman, so I know about birth control, if that's what you mean. Oh, no, that's not what I mean. This is the first date. You shouldn't even be thinking about birth control. Don't be giving it away. <laughs> the trouble with women nowadays, they give it away. And nobody respects anything they get for free. More wisdom from the gas company? <laughs> no, this is me I know it's old-fashioned and not what the feminists would like you to think, but I don't care. It's the truth. I mean... When a man puts his hand somewhere, there should be consequences depending on the location. <laughs> and just for the record, you don't ever just jump in the bed with somebody. It has to be gradual, over a period of weeks, months. A special look, a kiss here, a cruise there. <laughs> you have to build him up, bring him along, and make him want it so bad he aches. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of deceitful? I mean, if you want it to? It's not deceitful. It's smart. Now, my rule is, you've done your job right if a man leaves your house breathing hard and walking funny. Well, I, for one, would like to distance myself from this philosophy. I find it disgusting. It makes women sexual commodities. Well, you can call it whatever you like, Maddie, but I'm just telling you, men respect pain. They like it. That's why they watch football. That's why they like me. I thought we were here to warn Malone about the lines that guys give you. I mean, this is something that a person like her would be very susceptible to. Oh, I know about that. You mean like, what's your sign? <laughs> what's your sign? No, you poor kid. No one uses that one anymore. I mean, stuff like, um, hi, my name is Frank. I work in advertising. And my wife died last year of a brain tumor. Until I met you, I haven't really wanted to be with anyone. Except for my two small children, Max and Kara. Then later, you find yourself at his apartment in the Watergate. The house in Chevy Chase had just too many memories. He's wearing a fur speedo and asking you to beat him with a broom because he's been naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Gee, Emerson, this sounds oddly specific. Uh, uh, I was merely trying to provide an example to show her how screwed up some of these guys are. And how they'll just say anything to get what they want. Well, I think that's an isolated case. No one has ever asked me to beat them with a broom. Well, no one's ever asked me that either, Natty. Oh. Must happen to be a gifted wordsmith, okay? <laughs> Well, why would anyone want to be beaten with a broom anyway? I just don't understand stuff like that. I mean, isn't life hard enough? I thought you said men like pain. Oh, yes, lighthearted romantic pain, not vicious broom beating. <laughs> I mean, really, people have just gotten so screwed up. All right, I think we've gotten a little off the track here. What's important for Malone to remember is that she has certain dating rights, and she should not be embarrassed to demand them. So not only is it your right, it is your responsibility to find out what kind of sexually transmitted diseases this person might have and whether or not they've been tested for AIDS. And don't forget a full financial disclosure. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know if I can handle this. This is so overwhelming. I mean, there's really a minefield out there, isn't it? Well, that's exactly why we wanted to talk with you. And now that we have, I guess there's nothing left to say except have a wonderful time. <laughs> I've got a ton of typing for you to do. Oh, I just went out to the car to get the dress I'm wearing tonight. Also to the Rexall to pick up a few things. Representative Sugar Baker, if you don't mind, I'd like to show you all something in your office. Oh, okay. Come on, let's do it. We probably should have a little final chat before your big date tonight anyway. Now, my mother always used to give me cap there to keep in my shoe. That's a good idea. Anyway, I want you to know I thought about what all of you said. And I know you meant well, but since talking to you, I've just become an even bigger wreck. You see, I'm the type of person, if I take too long to do things, I just lose my nerve. Which is why I don't snow ski, have big breasts, or cable. <laughs> anyway, I just decided if I really like Brad tonight, and of course he doesn't have AIDS or a sexually transmitted disease, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and get it over with. You know, jump in feet first. That's what Jerry did, that's what I'm going to do too. So what's in the bag? which one to pick, and that's why I need your help. I don't want to make a mistake. You know, I saw this on Murphy Brown. She did the exact same thing. I know. That's where I got the idea. Road Warrior. Glows in the dark. 
Hmm. Good grief, Malone. You must spend a whole day's pay on this stuff. Hey, I don't care. I can't just sit around moping over Jerry anymore. If this gets me back on the market, it's money well spent. Would you look at some of these names? Champion, Big Ben, Excalibur. They sound like men cologne. I can just see them advertised on TV now. Impressive by Calvin Klein. Those are dark, huh? Road Warrior sounds pretty interesting. Not that I approve of sex on the first date. No, I kind of like Condom the Barbarian. Lady, may I remind you that this is a United States Congressional office, and as administrative assistant, I think it behooves all of us to conduct ourselves with a little dignity and decorum. Are you voting or not? Road Warrior. <laughs> but it's kind of unusual for me just to meet somebody in a hallway and then call them up and ask them out. Well, it's kind of unusual for me to accept me, me being married so long. I'm sorry. I've mentioned being married before, haven't I? Once or twice. Mm. So, have you ever been married before? Yeah. But my wife died several years ago. And until I saw you, I just hadn't wanted to be with anybody. Is something wrong? No, uh, it's just that my friend said you'd say that. Oh. Does she know me? Evidently, she knows all you guys whose wives have died. So, tell me a little about you. Oh, um, there's nothing to tell, really. I'm, uh, skinny. I'm helpful. I'm pale. That's what my son thinks of me. Of course, there's a side of me that nobody knows. Not even my soon-to-be ex-husband. And it's a side of me that just may come out tonight. You know, I, I have to tell you, there's something about you that really intrigues me. I mean, obviously you're beautiful, but there's also a sweetness you just don't find anymore. And you're like a girl on a cameo around the turn of the century. Oh. Brad, can I ask you something? What's that? Do you have any diseases? I'm Delta Burke. You're watching Women of the House on Lifetime, television for women. I really love my job. Everyone at work calls me Malone. It's very exciting. No one ever calls me by my last name before. <laughs> Thank you. Your apartment's very nice. Thanks. You probably have a house somewhere, too. But you have too many memories to take anyone there, huh? No, actually, this is it. This is my wife's and my first place together. I'm not real big on changing things. Matter of fact, she made that afghan you're using. Oh, really? Well, it's very nice. Oh, now I'm a seamstress, too. I, I designed all of Jerry's clothes. I uh, know it's silly, but I love to sew. I, I designed his suits, his shirts, his underwear, even that little soft cotton pouch part up front. Oh, it's, uh, I, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but you know what I mean. I am familiar with that part, yes. <laughs> I'm talking way too much. The truth is, Brad, I'm not really someone who is on the cutting edge of dating. Was, is that right? Yes. In fact, it's been... 20 years since I even had a date, and even then it was only with my husband. But I, I figure if I can just break the ice, you know, get the hard part over with, and just go with it, then I'll sort of be launched. I mean, you could be the one to launch me. I'm very flattered. Oh, no, it's nothing to be flattered about. I mean, I have no idea if your wife is really dead, or if you're going to want me to beat you with a broom later on, or what. <laughs> I mean, for all I know, we could end up in court. I, I just, I, I want to get started sometime. So I would really appreciate it if you would just strip me and take me. Oh. Uh, 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 I hope you don't mind. I, I took the liberty of bringing along a few condoms. Yes, I, I can see that. Uh, I don't want to alarm you, but I'm not sure I'm that good. That's all right. Jerry wasn't either, but he made up for it by being fast. <laughs> now, I don't know if you have a preference, but I hear Road Warrior is very well regarded.
What did you say your friends called you again? Malone. Is that what you want me to call you? No, I'd actually prefer you to call me Jennifer. You know what I'd really like to do, Jennifer? Just kiss you. Wouldn't that be all right? Well, I feel kind of silly saying no after I already said you could strip me. You see, Jennifer, I'm, I'm not a home run kind of guy. When I play ball, I like to stand on first base a while and look around. Then the next time up, maybe hit a double, land on second, listen to the crowd cheer. Eventually, I get to third, where I tip my hat, then finally home plate. When the bleachers rock, and everybody goes totally crazy. <laughs> Could be a game or could be a whole season. Kind of partial to seasons myself. Gosh, I didn't want to get emotionally involved. You're good. You're very good. <laughs> so tonight, let's just concentrate on everything from the neck up, okay? I gotta tell you, if this is a line, you shouldn't change a word of it. <laughs> And then Saturday, after we've had dinner and we've gotten to know each other even better, we'll do shoulders. Shoulders? That's right. Beautiful, naked shoulders. Is this the way men talk now? Because if it is, I don't know what women are complaining about. I like this. I like men. And we like you. Oh, I feel so slimy. I came here to take advantage of you, and you have been nothing but sweet and kind. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I'm having some very lascivious thoughts myself right now. Oh, no, no. I'm the heel here, not you. Now, I want you to tease me all you want, and then just throw me out. Really. I won't be happy unless I leave here breathing hard and walking funny. <laughs> We certainly have a lot of reports to cover. This is going to be a long night. It's Sapphire's night off, so I made us some tea. Hope I didn't overboil the water. Great. Excuse a little break. Even I have my limits on how long I can read the unabridged index of Alaskan fisheries. I wonder what Malone's doing right now. Probably looking at her shoe for that extra cab fare I gave her. <laughs> Poor kid. I know it sounds silly, but I almost feel guilty for not going with her. Yeah. There's no getting around it. Tonight we do a babe to the wolves. <laughs> oh. oh, God, you're here. I was afraid you wouldn't fill me up. Oh, what are you doing here? Don't tell me. You lost your cab fare home, and he made you walk. No, silly. Brad's outside. He's driving me home. Oh. Couldn't wait to get rid of you, huh? Probably had a late date. No, I had a wonderful time. He's so smart, kind, handsome, considerate. And when I offered myself to him, he turned me down. I knew it. He's gay. No way. He just likes to run around the bases slowly. And that's why this Saturday, we're only doing beautiful naked shoulders. Anyway, the law of averages tells me that my Brad can't be the only decent one out there. If there could be a man this wonderful in the world, there's got to be lots of others like him. And so I come as a messenger tonight, bearing the news that men are good. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by, Malone. You know, every time he said my name, Jennifer, it made my knees buckle. <laughs> that was how you're supposed to make him feel, honey. Remember? Oh, he does. Believe me. He was even kissing my hand while we were driving. I'm telling you, men are good. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for 
for sharing that information. Yes, we're all very happy. Remember, fairy tales can come true. They can happen to you. <laughs> Good night. Well, it's very sad, isn't it? Oh, very. You know, after all that careful preparation, we forgot to warn her about the most evil, the most treacherous, the most untrustworthy man of all. Mm. The perfect man. Oh. <laughs> Burke. Stay tuned for more Women of the House coming up next on Lifetime.